So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn on my perspective grid. So I'm going to come down here to this little tool, and that's the perspective grid. And as soon as I click it, it shows up. And that's really annoying because if you accidentally, you're like, what is this tool? Oh, that's it. And then you're like, okay, go away now. I'm tired of what is this thing here? I don't like this. Well, let's go ahead and click that X and see what happens. It goes away and that's good. And if it doesn't go away, or if you can't click that little X, I have a problem with it sometimes. I can come up here under the view menu, choose perspective grid, and I can say to go ahead and hide the grid. In this case, I'm gonna say show grid and bring it back. So what am I looking at? Well, it kind of looks like that building that we had to draw in second grade, right? There's that building. And I'm like, oh, I'm looking at a building. I get it. And I'm kind of higher up and I'm looking down. So I'm just going to show you a couple things that are on here. And I'm going to show you some of the things you can do. If you want to get into it, I tell you, the help menu alone is really long and confusing. There are some really good videos out there as well. Um, but sometimes I think they assume you know how to draw in perspective already. So I'm like, no, I want this tool because I don't know how, right? So, but a couple things that we, we do need to deal with. We need to deal with the floor. And, and by the way, when this comes on, there are three different perspective grids that you can have, three types you can have in Illustrator file. And you can only have one perspective grid per file. So kind of limited there. But you have three kinds, one point, two point, and three point perspective, okay? And this is, I believe, the two point perspective. Right, so those are there by default. And I also have a separate one called garages, and we're gonna play with that in a second. Um, because I saved it so that I didn't have to set it all up again, right? And that's the great thing. Once you find a perspective that works, keep it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as the two-point perspective. And this is the floor. This is where the bottom of your whatever, we're gonna call it the block, you know, the block of buildings here lives. And this is the horizon line, right? So this is where the horizon is off in the distance. And this is great if you can just visualize what this is gonna look like. But sometimes it's really great to also have a photograph to cheat off of, right? And we're gonna do that in just a second. So I can tell this, I can come up here and grab this and say this is how tall my grid is. Maybe I'm standing at the base of a very tall building. And one thing you're gonna to have to get used to with perspective grids is zooming way out sometimes, you know? Because sometimes it's gonna take you to zoom out that far to get the horizon line right, depending on the photo that you're looking at or whatever you're trying to achieve. In this case, I'm standing at the bottom of a very tall building downtown, right? So that's what my building looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete that right now. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that yet. Let's shorten this up. And I'm gonna zoom back in a little bit so I can see some of the items that are here. The other things we have are the two sides. Now, why is this a three, a two plane perspective? Because we've got these two sides. We also have the floor, but the third one will actually give us a ceiling as well, or a roof to the building, whatever you want to call it. And we also have a one plane perspective, and that's the one I'm going to draw on in a second. But right now I can say, okay, I want to change the size of this grid on the right. Whether or not I want it to go back further to the vanishing point, I can grab this little button over here and grab this. Do I have them set to do the same thing? I don't. There we go. I'm just changing the amount of grid that's there. Right? I can also take these little, it's kind of hard to see, the one on the left here and the one on the right. The one on the left controls the grid on the right, which sounds confusing unless you think of it like a gate. If I grab this, I can swing that gate open from that point at the back. The only thing I don't like is that I can't get it to automatically snap right back where it was. So I could do the same thing here. So that's great. Maybe I'm going to draw that and I don't need it to come all the way forward because it's like I'm standing right against it or something and I just want to draw these two items here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo and undo. So it gets back to where I had it. And I want to just show you what the point of the perspective grid is. Because obviously if I was drawing in perspective, I want to draw something. If I draw a rectangle, I would like it to be a rectangle in perspective. So you need to have this widget available because this shows you how many faces you have available to you. So I have the face that's blue there, I have the orange one on the other side, and I have the bottom or the floor. So I need to know which one I'm drawing on. So by default now in the newer versions, when you draw, it automatically lets you draw and move things right onto the perspective grid. It didn't used to do that. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle and I find that sometimes it's easier to draw what I need outside and then drag it onto the perspective grid, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw Oops, I don't want to do that. I want it to draw. I'm going to click in this gray area outside, which means I'm not on any face at all. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. But now I want to move this rectangle onto that perspective grid. This is where I think it's 
really hard to remember. If I just grab this and drag it, it didn't do anything. I have to use a special tool. That's underneath the perspective grid. So what I'm gonna do is click and hold and tear off this little item because these things I'm gonna use back and forth. The perspective grid to deal with the grid and work with the widget and this that actually deals with selecting and moving objects. So I'm gonna use the perspective selection tool here and grab this item and I'm gonna start dragging it. Yes, I am. Why is it not letting me drag it? Very interesting. All right, I'm gonna delete that. I have no idea why it's not letting me do that. Let's go ahead and draw right on the perspective grid. So I went ahead and I've selected that face and I'm just gonna start drawing with my rectangle tool. And if you notice, it's drawing it in perspective and it continues on even past the grid. So maybe I was gonna make a, a door or something like that. So I'm gonna come in here and just draw that item and we'll go ahead and make it a little bit thicker so we can see it. All right, but one thing I need to keep in mind, if I just drag this item and carry it here, you notice it didn't get any bigger like it should have. I'm gonna undo that. The thing is you have to remember to use the selection tool that's the perspective. And that's the hardest part for me is to remember to go back and grab that. And anything I need to do, I need to go back and grab that first. But I'll tell you, it's sure worth it once you do it because now I've got that perspective there.